KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Oh, thanks for tuning in. I have the pleasure of speaking to Skinny, drummer, percussionist of Cleveland, Ohio's own Mushroom Head. How you doing, man? Hey, man. How are you? Thanks for having me on. No problem, no problem. Pleasure to talk to you. We are here talking about your, uh, well, all things Mushroom Head, and as well as the upcoming release, A Wonderful Life, that is set to come out on June 19th through Napalm Records. How are you feeling about that? I'm excited, man. Absolutely. It's the first uh, full-length album we put out in six years, so you know I've been dying to share the art with the world. For the last two years, we've been concentrating on this thing pretty hard, and, uh, and we had to do some touring as well. But it all kind of tied together to actually finishing the al album up in a nice way. So I, I'm actually really, really proud of it. I'm super excited. Nice. Were you guys taking your time? Was the six years intended? You know, uh, part of the six years was more of the touring. And that's kind of where that gap uh, took the majority of the time. And one of those markets that we wanted to reestablish ourselves in for touring was the UK and uh, mm. Europe. So it took a little while. We started in 2016 going, you know, once, twice a year on our own as much as we could. Uh, and, you know, with our show, we have, you know, the extra water drums, the extra percussion. So uh, that took a minute to get all of that logistically uh, worked out. But now we have a storage facility in, at in Essen, Germany. So we've got drums, water drums, a lot of staging, so uh, we can put on a pretty decent show, uh, you know, club size show tour, and uh, fairly easy in the UK and Europe now. We just get on a plane, and we're pretty much ready to go. So it took a while to reestablish ourselves there, and then uh, ran into some lineup changes, mm -hmm. which is nothing new for this band. Right. Uh, we, we seem to go through a lineup change no matter what every single album. Mm -hmm. uh, it just uh, apparently part of it. So uh, that that really didn't set us back at all, but it, it led us into a little bit um, more focused uh, attention on the writing as far as, you know, we've got some new characters, so we just did a lot of experimenting. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, the majority of that time off, though, was, was spent uh, trying to reestablish ourselves in Europe and uh, UK touring markets. Yeah, and not just uh, touring, but just like as a band again, trying to build up that uh, that core element, I guess you could say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we hadn't gone there since really 20, you know, 2002, 2003. So mm -hmm. you're talking almost, you know, 14 years at least. I mean, because we started again in 2016. So, you know, 12 years, they hadn't seen us at all. Mm -hmm. um, we were putting out records. We just had zero touring over there and, you know, went through a lot of lineup changes and even added. So when we were there originally in, say, 2002 on OzFest and things of that nature, um, we didn't have... Uh, water drums and extra percussion that wasn't even worked into the show yet so that evolved in that time as well so when it came back it was like oh we truly are almost starting over mm -hmm. and um you know it, it it was it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a challenge you know i will say especially doing it all on our own you know uh just figuring it out we, we had some help with some booking agents and a lot of friends as well but uh you know financially and things of that nature uh you know there wasn't any tour support for for any any projects like that at the time mm -hmm. um so we just kind of went ahead and did it ourselves but mm -hmm. uh you know I, I think it's 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 paying off you know one of the the big things that came out of it was uh you know signing with napalm records yeah um, which you know was was awesome they've got a, a hell of a roster and man they're, mm -hmm. they're a great label they they really understand uh how to how to market and they really understand their artists it's been really good Totally, yeah. Napalm Records seems to be like one of the underground labels that's really uh, blooming as of late. So, yeah, you, you point out it's like your Napalm Records debut for like a good long time. You guys were with Megaforce Records, and how was the relationship with them? Absolutely great, man. We were with them from, you know, uh, what, 2005 until, you know, basically up to this last album. Uh, did a lot of work with those guys. They're an amazing camp over there as well. Yeah. It was just... Uh, it's a legendary, Party. legendary label. Absolutely, absolutely proud of every minute of being with those guys. Um, you know, and great, great people as well. Mm -hmm. Helped us out quite a bit throughout the years. You know, couldn't have done it without them. But I, you know, it's it's where the focus shifted. And um, you know, as as a band and you know, as an artist, 
we wanted to you know reach out a little more globally and he's got, they've got such a great scene going on over in Europe mm -hmm. um, we weren't we really didn't have the opportunity to take advantage of it so when we started looking into it heavy we said it really makes sense for us to if we this is what we want to do this makes sense for us to be with a, a label that's kind of based here and has roots here and can help break this band here you know it's, right. it's like literally like it's like starting over oh, uh, so and you also mentioned now uh, with you know this feeling of starting over and the new members now you have uh, more female vocals it seems added on this latest album and uh, and Miss Jackie who has been uh, an integral part of your touring lineup now my understanding is she's now a full-on member right yeah yeah um, you know and that was kind of a gradual thing and even on the album you know she's I, I think she's on five out of you know 17 or five out of 15 tracks that actually have vocals on them um so she's not like you know like a full time on every song you know mm -hmm. and, and i think a lot of people think that when they you know hear well, about it like oh they got a girl now how is that gonna work <laughs> well it's kind of well you're gonna have to listen to the record to see how it works because True. we didn't really know how it was gonna work we knew that we wanted her to be a guest on a mm -hmm. track right. for sure and then it just kind of oh man i'd love to hear what she could do to this and boy i could love to hear what she could do to that and then you know with stevie coming in mr rockhorse his abilities are all over the place and we wanted to do a lot of experimenting you know see where his comfort level is and then make sure he's not in it and <laughs> you know things of that nature so it was a lot of collaborating and a lot of experimenting and the way Stevie and Jackie work together it was it was just really amazing for us as an end result like you know some of the harmonies that they could do that they mm -hmm. naturally heard without anyone even having to ask them or say anything mm -hmm. uh, that they just naturally did it, it was it was really cool because we've never really had that you know that weapon in the arsenal so to speak before sure, sure. You no know? and now we've got like this whole new you know set of colors to paint with and it's just a, it brings so much texture and life that we were just never able to do before and just really never tried to go in that direction and their ability is so uh diverse that it, it like i said it adds a lot of L, a lot of texture and a lot of dynamic to the record. It, it, it's really cool. I, I enjoyed every minute of the tracking with those guys. Yeah, I, I had a chance to listen to the record, and it's really colorful, beautiful. And uh, you know, to begin with, you guys were like, I, I guess I want to throw out the word experimental. You you branched out a lot in a lot of styles of music, and you just with this one, and and just throughout your whole history, it seems like you guys branch out like totally like a tree with so many elements, and somehow you're able to capture it, and. Uh, the sound, especially with so many elements going into this, like, is it, is it a great difficulty to capture that sound in the studio and that element? You know, I think what we try to capture is honesty, ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, nice. um, I can tell if an idea is just forced or contrived. I, mean, mm -hmm. I throw away a lot of my own ideas, that's for sure, oh. as a producer and a drummer. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I again, I, I think it, it it boils down to, you know, the honesty in the music. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, people can tell, like I said, if it's contrived or not. Um, yeah, always always try to just go with our gut feeling for sure. Yeah, totally, totally. And you want that, like uh, you, you said, you mentioned earlier, like it's the DIY effect kind of uh, coming into play and you have that ability. You said you produced the album as well? Um, so I, I've been fortunate enough to basically, you know, I've been involved with all of it, so I've been, you know, producing on every album and like you said it's a lot of elements uh put together and always maintaining a cohesiveness because right. it is experimental it was always supposed to be an experimental project it was oh, okay yeah it was always originally it was just a studio project mm. and it came out so well and interesting that we were like we should take this to the stage and you know right what do we dress like? How do we, what do we look like? And, you know, the rest is history from there, obviously. Sure. But, um, yes, it, it's very, very experimental. And I often, and, it, and because of experimenting, you know, it, you kind of never know what you get. And I, I tend to like that. Mm -hmm. um, I often refer to it as a junk drawer of sound <laughs> uh, because it's all contained by the drawer, you know. But inside there's all these pieces, parts that go to all these different things, but they're all important. Mm -hmm. And they all belong in this drawer. Right, right. And if you eat it, you know where it's at. But you know, yeah. if it's out of that drawer, you know what I mean? So, yeah, the junk drawer of sound has been a, a reference for quite some time. And, uh, yeah, you know, you... I, 
I, I just, you know, I, I again, I, I come back to the to the honesty is where where it, it maintains its cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you go into that junk drawer, and there's like a lot of memories in there. Sometimes you revisit something. Like, is that kind of how you approach it? You revisit something that worked in the past, and you just threw it back in there also. Because I mean, you definitely had your mushroom head as as varied as the sound is you still had that mushroom hit sound that makes you guys so unique yeah absolutely and you know you, you hit it on the head you go back in the drawer and you, you grab this thing needs a little bit of creepiness to it you know so you go yeah. find you know the, the little creepy thing or this needs to be a little more brash and in your face so you go and you know get that little brash and you know like you can have influence come from older songs and you know, I think it's one of the best things when you're working with someone, especially when you've worked with them before, is to use uh, some of their best previous work as an example. You know, mm -hmm. of, hey, I like how you did this, and man, we need more of that. You know, you keep things positive and moving forward, and uh, you know, it, it it makes people want to collaborate. And I think that's what we we got out of this album. Everyone was really excited and on the same page, and mm -hmm. willing to take the time to absorb the material and to try to um, you know tweak it a little bit and see where we like I said we to try to stay out of our comfort zone and almost get into boy I don't know there's something about this I I, <laughs> I think I like it you know or, <laughs> man I don't know yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I like it you know yeah. so I, I like to keep keep myself on that because you know writing the same song is is that never been the the the, the the plan never paint the same painting and you know on this album i think we really branched out because uh there's a lot of key changes throughout the entire album not mm -hmm. every song is written in b it's not dropped on we're not all just mm -hmm. head banging i'm not riding a china symbol you know like right. it, it's it's some diverse stuff it's thought out it's um it's it's very much like I the Pink Floyd was a huge you know the Wall was a huge influence for this record. I listened to that album. Oh, nice! While we made while we made this, oh. just because of the, the <laughs> space and the the drama to it all, mm -hmm. if you will, you know. Uh, love that album still to to this day. It'll be my in my top ten forever. Oh. Top five. Of course, of course, even the movie too. Like I, you know, I get my nice little buzz on or something and throw that on, and I just trip for hours. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, that's, a, that's yeah. a beautiful piece of work, man. Yeah. Both the album and the movie, absolutely. It's the spacing and timing of it all. You know what I mean? You just you gotta like let it breathe a little bit, I think. And uh, you definitely have that like theatrical, operatic, I guess, uh, element, and and it translates well. I've seen you guys a couple of times live, and you know you. No, I mean, needless to say, you put a lot of thought into this, of course, and you see it, it's it's reflective on stage. You guys are so visually stimulating, and it's not just like, you know, a bunch of guys just dancing around, jumping around on stage. No, you guys, you know, it's like you guys really choreograph. So I don't know if you guys choreograph it, but it's visually, not just the costumes, but you guys really put the effort on your live stage. Yeah, you know, after a while, the movements on stage kind of become second nature, mm -hmm. and you just, you just, you know, the feel of 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 where it's going to go. But I, you know, I thank you for the kind words about the live show, and I, I will add this to that: that a lot of people throughout my career have said that, you know, and they don't mean it in a bad way, but they <laughs> they like the band better live. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I understand what they mean because, you know, we've got the water drums, there's the extra excitement, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, Jack, you know, does, you know, she walks on the crowd as, you know, one of her, one of the songs is kind of a staple moment in, in the set that we've built recently. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's entertainment. And as sure. entertainers, we, we like to be entertained too. So, you know, right. if we're not entertained, then no one else is going to be, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You, you definitely got to put yourself like in the audience, you know, it's like, what am I going to... What am I going to like from the show? What am I going to take away? What am I going to go home talking about? What am I going to tell my friends about, you know? Yeah, yeah, we try to do that too. So afterwards, when we either watch a videotape of it or we sit and talk on the bus or in the dressing room, we'll be like, oh, that show was great. Hey, did you see Stevie was out there climbing in the rafter? Or, mm -hmm. You know, that type of, or did you see the, you know, the one kid up front with the tattooed mm -hmm. lip or whatever, you know? <laughs> uh, it's always, it's always, uh, you know, part of, like I said, we love to be entertained as well as we like to entertain. And that's, uh, man, I can't wait to get out and play some live shows. Totally. Uh, I hope soon. Totally, totally. And, and we'll touch on that too, but uh, you mentioned real quick, like uh, one of the aspects that I enjoy talking to bands about, and I feel like these, these, are, these are tips for like aspiring musicians who want to develop a good stage show. You point out some interesting things, like how many bands do you think like actually sit back, watch a videotape of themselves and analyze little aspects and 
you know, maybe even without even realizing, it's like you're taking notes you, as a band, you're sharing ideas. And I think that's very important, especially for a large group, eight members that you guys, him and the band, I mean, it's important to communicate, right? Oh, absolutely. And for band members that wear masks, it's really hard oh, to do yeah. oh, while yeah. you're on stage. So the best way to do it is watch yourself. And I know a lot of bands don't like to watch themselves afterwards. They think they were just fine. But no. there's always something that you can improve on. I right. don't care what show it is and how big you are. Mm -hmm. The bigger the bigger the production, the more that you're going to have to watch what you're doing. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about, you know, having a presentation that speaks to, you know, an audience and hopefully, you know, each individual person that is there, you know, as an individual as well. So I, I, I highly suggest grabbing any camera and setting it up for any band that's, you know, trying to improve their live show and their stage performance or just even just how they are and their mm -hmm. persona on stage. Um, yeah, definitely film yourself and, and watch it and, and, and don't be shy and, and don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, it might be cool if you do this. You got to try. You can't win if you don't play. But uh, yeah, watch what you do, man. You, you'll, you'll come up with a lot of things to fix real quick. <laughs> yeah, like you can't you can't forget that the visual aspect of the, especially the live show is like a very, very important thing, man. Very important thing, especially nowadays with social media and stuff like that. Like, man, you know, you, you got to really uh, incorporate that and keep that in mind. And you guys, yeah. have, for the 25 years, right, that you guys have been around, I mean, you kind of, you've seen the change with social media and before Instagram and Facebook was a thing, right? Yeah, we had, uh, we had mailing lists and stuff when we started, you know, you came up to the merch booth, you actually wrote your address down, <laughs> and we sent stuff out, you know, to your home, you know, mailbox suit. Yeah. So, you know, then we went through our whole, uh, street, know, street teams. I remember street teams. I was, I did some of that. Yeah, that was absolutely a thing, man. It was huge for us too. Mm -hmm. uh, we we took great pride in having a monster street team. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of trouble, but you know those were the nights. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that was fun though. That, those were great, some good times. You know, you get that. I I remember doing it, and you get stuff in the mail, and you get so stoked. You're like, oh, check it out, fuck yeah, you know, and you're pasting stickers all over the fucking place, man. It's it's a great feeling. <laughs> yeah, no, that absolutely, that, and that's exactly the kind of trouble I mean. We had a couple of high schools that were not happy with us locally because oh. of this problem. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you made your you made your name for yourself that in your hometown. That's great, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we worked hard, man. We worked hard, and we yeah. still do. Absolutely, we yeah. love it though. I yeah. love, love, you know, love every minute of it. We're very blessed. I don't take any of this for granted. Right. And, and lucky. And how and how was the scene growing up um, when you guys started out as a band? Are you as a teenager like getting into into music? Like how was it now? I mean, how was it then compared to like how you see it now? You know, it, it's strange because it seemed to be a much bigger and a tighter community when uh, we started off. And you oh. know, say let's talk about like the nineties, for example. Mm -hmm. A lot of bands, but everyone was was working. There was a lot of networking. There was a lot of uh, we would trade shows from, you know, bands in Pittsburgh, you know, you right. hook us up, we'll hook you up. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of networking that camaraderie, yeah. camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, sure. And, um, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's all still there. I think there's still a ton of talent everywhere, but I just don't think it's as widely, uh, pushed or, uh, like sought after, uh, like the gig swaps and that type of thing, because there's just the internet, and it, the way it makes everything so accessible that, well, I don't need that band. I can just go get mm. and hit up the promoter or the bar myself. Right. It, it doesn't promote that same, yeah, like you said, the camaraderie of it all. So I, I, I see it as a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm, totally. Uh, it kind of limits you because you're you kind of, unless you're thinking outside the box, you know, it, it kind of limits exactly. you. Exactly. In the same way that, oh, because you have all of these options, you know, you got to pick one and do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, yeah. I, 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 the scene kind of can be, I guess, oversaturated in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And real good stuff gets overlooked. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of missed the way the 90s were. Like I said, the gig swaps and the, the a little bit more of the camaraderie to where you went to a show and there was, you know, three guys from this band, and two guys from this band at every show. Right. Like, and I mean, they weren't just, oh, I ran into that guy, you know, and it was just more of a, more of a scene for sure. Right. Uh, and, and now everyone just talks it on Facebook or, you know, they talk 
Yeah. So often because of technology that it's not like, well, I I'll, I know I'll see those guys at that show and we'll, you know, talk about it then. I mean, there was, you know, shows that, you know, we were literally going to to look for band members, you know, and then that type right. of thing, right. you know, to where, you know, it's like, ah, let's go, let's, let's, let's go talent hunting, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. We're like, as now, like, oh, let me just go on Facebook and join a group and like see who comes up. It's like, no, 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 man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, the mentality is just different. And, you know, yeah. it's no fault of its own, but it's just what happened. But that's kind of how it was when we were growing up. A lot of street teams and a lot of camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I'm in I'm in Los Angeles. So, I mean, which everything you pointed out, like, I totally see it. You know what I mean? And like, I'm only 41, but I've definitely seen the change in the scene where like, yeah, there was a lot of camaraderie back in the day. Social media stepped in and kind of messed it up a little bit. But it's uh, how they say it's the nature of the beast. You got to embrace it a little bit and you got to yeah. work. You got to let it work for you, you know? Absolutely. Now, you know, with this whole Corona thing, the bologna virus, we call it. Bologna. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like you know come on uh, uh -huh. but either way yeah it's it's it, you're really a, at the mercy of the technology oh, which yeah. you know mm -hmm. i'm always up for a challenge but mm -hmm. you know um it, literally the only way people are getting their entertainment it seems like you know it's it's mostly youtube so it's, yeah wow, wow okay you know yeah. you just got to look at the whole presentation a little different now you right know? right right and, so, and, and, and uh, uh, and we're fortunate though that we're we're really heavy duty into our our the visuals and the visual aesthetic of presenting the band Mushroom Head, you know, in a certain mm -hmm. light. So we uh, we love the challenge of making videos and things of that nature. No, of course, and the visual aspect, like we said, it's a definitely an important part. But just as important as the music, and just as important as the business aspect of it, that you know people need to. Uh, when I say people, I mean you know music, musicians or anybody that wants to be involved in the music industry needs to really keep in their head, you know, 100% of the time. And uh, you you touched on the coronavirus and this whole pandemic thing. Um, how is your state of mind? Do you talk to the band members? How's everybody doing? You know, everyone's good, everyone's healthy. Um, we're, uh, you know, maintaining social social media distancing. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're, yeah, we're definitely, uh, I, Doing the, doing the best we can. We've definitely ran into a few, uh, you know, it, it's very challenging to put out products during something like this. You know, there's mm -hmm. definitely no rule book for it. Oh, so no, no what to do. You know, when it, when it happened, uh, we had just finished the mastering. Um, so we had to do some videos. So I'll give you an example how difficult it was when you, uh, we did two videos recently. Mm -hmm. The first one was for us called Seen It All. And when you go back and you watch that video, you'll notice almost every single shot is a person individually and by themselves. So oh. we had a super skeleton crew. There's a few shots with a singer and a guitar player about 12 feet behind them. Mm -hmm. But um, it's uh, it, the whole thing. Like, And we were even limited on what lighting we could rent, what, you know, mm. grip you could get, even, you know, like track, dolly. We couldn't rent. Nothing was open. This was like right when it first started. So... Everyone was super paranoid, even the band members. And, uh, you know, so, but I knew we had to produce something or right. it would have been like a lyric video or something. And we're such <laughs> a visual band. I didn't want that. Yeah. So I came up with a clever way uh, to do it. So when you go back and you watch that video, you'll notice like the, the tripod doesn't move, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. we had shot people on separate days and then just did some, you know, cropping and editing on the frame and slid them in. So it looks like they're standing in the same room but if you watch it almost every one of those shots everyone's individually so shot individually so it, it was quite a challenge man and mm -hmm. uh you know where it's headed you know obviously that no one knows there's you know mm -hmm. everything it's so uncertain it is it is so, yeah so we're just going to focus on staying home and making videos uh so uh you know because we're doing everything local right it, it's a diy camp um, we have our own little sound stage where we re rehearse and build, Great. you know, sets and that kind of stuff. So we did that scene at all one. And then, you know, some of the restrictions were lifted. So people were feeling a little bit better mm -hmm. and, uh, be cautious though, be cautious though. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, that's kind of what it, you know, where I was, I, I, I said, all right, we, we need to work, but you know, if you don't want to, you know, we'll figure out a creative way to do it. So right. even the video that we just did, the heresy, you'll notice a lot of people are individual or completely you know, like around 12 feet away. Mm -hmm. Again, we did super skeleton crews and, um, 
you know i think everyone was just in a better mood because they got their stimulus check <laughs> <laughs> yeah that definitely will you know <laughs> help you out yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Feel, I feel you on that man well uh, and uh, so you guys had completed your tour uh circuit and you guys were able to just focus on the recording and writing of the music right you know a lot of this was uh written and arranged and some of it actually recorded on the road wow uh we I built a small, like I'm a gear nut, so I built a small little portable Pro Tools rig that we could uh, put some different mic pre's in front of them and brought some decent stuff out on the road. So when mm -hmm. we did capture an idea, uh, we could keep it if, if need be, you know, instead of going to the studio, well, we'll redo that, we'll redo that. Yeah, yeah. That sometimes you miss the moment of, you know, the the capture, you yeah. know, there's actual desire and angst or whatever in that <laughs> particular take. And if you did it like on a, on a you know, a less quality microphone, you know, a little like, task cam or something. <laughs> and then you regret it going, man, that could have sounded great, but mm. you know, it's got character to it. So, um, you know, yeah. I, I'm big on it both ways. So, uh, we did a lot of, a lot of ideas and writing and arranging on, on the bus itself, right in the front lounge. Mm. But yeah. like on the flip side, we, uh, when we were in London, uh, we rented out Abbey Road Studios for an afternoon. We did it twice. Beautiful. We, uh, yeah, last two times we went to, uh, we played London that evening, both times. Mm -hmm. So we had this, the studio from about, uh, you know, 10 a.m. to about 5 p.m. And the first time we were there, we had the Studio B where they did Dark Side of the Moon. Nice. And, and it was just like, I, it was so, such a trip just to be there, you know. And yeah. we toured the whole place and saw where they, you know, record all the orchestras you know, for all, all the soundtracks and that kind of stuff. So the place was just, you know, legendary. Yeah. And uh, as, a Pink just, as a Pink Floyd fan, did you like have a little tear in your eye when you were like there? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So um, what, we stopped in for both afternoons and uh, recorded a lot of vocals. And you'll hear uh, some of those vocals that were captured at Abbey Road on the track called The Heresy. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackie's vocals for the main parts, you know, the verses and the in mm -hmm. the hook is all all done at Abbey. The and, war machine, uh, the war machine part. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all beautiful. It's beautiful. First uh, verse mm -hmm. is uh, all Abbey as well. So that 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 tune really translated well for us. Right. Uh, and uh, it came out great. The, the whole the whole song. But totally. It's just funny to me, you know, after doing the video and all that stuff. It's as soon as you press play. I I'm still sitting in that in that studio it brings me right back there no matter what that's all i can think of that's great uh, it's, it's abbey road when i hear that song like i said with video and all the rest of the stuff combined doesn't even matter i just i'm instantly sitting in that control room so yeah it's a great great memory to have that's awesome that's amazing dude. that's really fucking great now um did you guys have a, a tour lined up or plans to hit the road before this whole uh lockdown yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it started uh, June 29 through I think what was it, July 14 or 15, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. It was uh, all Europe. It was a couple of the bigger festivals, and then we were uh, headlining all the the side dates. Mm -hmm. uh, so all that just got pushed and postponed to 2021. Damn, you guys would be like in game mode and starting your preparations for the tours, and huh? Yeah, yeah. I probably would have already, you know had a bunch of stuff shipped over ahead of time for us and mm -hmm. yeah we you know be yeah. scrambling for you know flights or whatever right now <laughs> you want to hit the road you, after just coming off the road you're like you want to get back on there and you just can't everybody's just like ah we gotta just yeah. it's crazy this is the first spring like a uh, month of may that we've had off in seven years wow um, yeah and it's the first and like if we don't do any shows this year this will be the first one in 17 years Mm. So of no touring. So it, first year in 17 years that we wouldn't be on a bus. <laughs> it's crazy. Is, is it hard to like change your mindset? You're like kind of like, oh, what do what do I do with myself? Like, what do I you know? What do I go from here or what the hell? Well, we've had some pretty good discussions about um, you know staying staying on course and finishing out a few more videos, just because it's it, it's very much something that can be done with a few of us at a time if we do right. it right. And, you know, I can continue editing while we're shooting and build the things to where we don't need a lot of people all at once. And, you know, if the whole band isn't performing as a band in it, then, you know, you don't need to make it this giant production uh, of, of people anyway. So we're going to try to take advantage of it and, and make some art, you know, specifically in the form of videos. Right. Um, and then hope that 
things just start picking up enough to where everyone's comfortable enough to where we can start doing full rehearsals, you mm-hmm. know, with, with crew and all that. I mean, cause you know, we take about a month to get a, a, a show ready, you know, as far oh, as wow. crew and everything. If, if, if we're given enough, enough time, you sure. know, put a new set together and do that kind of thing. So, you know, we're looking forward to doing that, you know, once things lighten up a little bit, but you know, the world's still pretty, pretty uncertain. So yeah. we're just going to stick with the, you know, making the video stuff for now. All right. Again, this is KNEC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. We're talking with Skinny of Mushroom Head. What has driven you? What's that motivation that has, you know, kept Mushroom Head going? You know, personally for me, you know, and I'm definitely, you know, a big portion to blame here as far as, you know, keeping, <laughs> keeping the Mushroom Head wheels on. Um, for me, you know, it, it really is uh, the just the artist in me. Uh, it's... I, the addiction to the craft itself of creating, whether it's a song or a video, I, I actually love the whole the whole process of you know a melody that turns into a riff that turns into a song that eventually gets published and turned into a video, which gets uploaded. Like there's something to to say about the whole thing. So when you look at it as a whole. You know, it, it, it's 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 a hell of an adventure. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, again, I'm really blessed to be able to 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 create art, and I think that that's that's really the uh, the driving force behind it is um, having the ability to exploit my creativity mm-hmm. uh, and just continue to um, try to raise my own bar, if you will. Like I just I'm always searching for you know what's next and uh, a lot of times I I don't know until I start creating and and working with other people and finding things and you know instantly going you know that trying to capture that lightning in a bottle if you will (laughs) I'm always always searching for that and a lot of it like I said is down to the due to the uh, the addiction of the craft itself Uh, very good very good do you have a lot of input or what's uh, who's the creative team behind the costumes and the masks and everything? You know, there's there's quite a I got quite a camp, quite a good team. Um, the the current sculptor, uh, his name is Jason Kisner. So a lot of us will throw ideas around, whether they're from video game references or, you know, movies or something, you know, like my, a past reference, like my my new mask is just a, a variation of my last mask. It's just a little bit, a little bit meaner, mm-hmm. a little bit, you know, more graphic, a little bit more detail to it. Um, so there, there's quite a, quite a few of us. Uh, Stitch, he does you know, keyboards and samples and water drums. He, uh, he and I do a lot of the uh, wardrobe designs, the stage show designs, as far as like the banners and the scrims, and then even down to the videos like the set designs and you know we'll come up with a concept and then literally you know pull out the table saws and the you know chop saws and literally cut the stuff up and drill it together a lot of that stems from us growing up as horror movie fans and uh you know as kids like young teenagers before we could drive even um spending our time every fall uh helping build haunted houses locally oh that's awesome yeah wow so that kind of all just kind of uh, carried over um, right into you know having a mass band and uh, you know staying creative and just constantly tweaking and playing with the looks but yeah uh, stitch has a lot to do with it in house as well um, uh, so you could I couldn't do it without him for sure that's awesome you mentioned stitch another one of the longtime members in the band and uh, to touch on that j man is also back with you guys yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's fun, fun little story with that one. You know, it was like 2013. He and I were doing this hip hop project called 10,000 Cadillacs. It was a throwback to something that he and I were doing in the 90s. And then we were hanging out quite a bit. And I was working on the Righteous and the Butterfly. And uh, I had said, uh, hey, man, I got a couple of tracks that, you know, I totally hear your voice on. If you, you know, love it, if you, you know, wouldn't mind checking them out, I'd love to possibly have you on the record. And uh, that year was, it was 2013, so we were, like, writing that Rush in the Butterfly, and it was 20 years of, uh, 
a 20 year anniversary with Mushroom Man. I'm like, oh, dude, we got to do a tour or, or, mm -hmm. or a show and possibly a tour, just a 20 year anniversary tour. And, uh, you know, we could have some fun. So that all kind of tied into him hanging around. Uh, we were doing that project. I asked him to do a, a tune. And the next thing you know, we're doing a tour. Next thing you know, he's on like three tunes. And I was like, wow, I'll just come back for this one. And he was like, <laughs> So it was really never discussed even. It just, it was, again, it was just another natural occurrence. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, not a weird transition. You know, mm -hmm. everyone knew everyone. And, you know, he came just swinging, came back swinging hard, man. It was great. That's cool. And you guys, the familiarity, it just made the transition, like you said, smooth. That's great, man. And and I'm happy for you guys that you guys are reunited in this sense. And um, again, we're here talking to Skinny drummer percussionist of mushroom head their release coming out june 19th through their napalm records debut a wonderful life make sure you pick that up the pre-orders are now um one thing that i enjoy about talking with drummers because i'm a drummer myself and we get to talk a little bit of shop um tell me a little bit about your kit um this one is a uh, is it hyperstar <laughs> i have like three kits right now <laughs> of course and and one in Europe too. Uh, yeah, it's the Tama. It's it's a Hyperstar, I believe. Um, it's all maple. I, mean, mm -hmm. it's, I believe they're all nine ply. Uh, but I've been with Tama for years. Uh, great camp over there. They've been through some lineup changes as well throughout the years. But yeah. uh, uh, it's man, such a solid product. Totally. I'm a Tama yeah. guy myself too. Yeah, right on. So yeah, you know, man, you get a, a good die cast tube on it. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it, they're dynamite. They got great bearing edges. You know, I know technology's changed. Anyone can kind of do a good bearing edge, but yeah. I've been with Tama forever. It's rock solid stuff. It, mm -hmm. it's damn near indestructible. Their hardware is great. It, it, it stands up for touring because we're hell on gear on tour. I, oh, I, I can imagine. <laughs> you do 120, 160 shows a year, man. Mm -hmm. it, stuff gets beat and scuffed up. But uh, right. yeah, uh, Tama drums. I've been a Zildjian guy for almost 20 years as ah, well. Me too. I'm a Zildjian guy. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, just just love it. I track with it as well. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of thin little Sabian hi hats that I really and there's a ride I, I have a Sabian as well that I it's kind of in my uh, recording arsenal. Mm -hmm. um, got a couple of Babinga snares that's in the recording arsenal as well. Um, but uh, you know, I I I write a lot of material with V drums. Oh, and, the Roland, right? Yeah, me too. That's crazy. So, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, and I, I do that. Well, hey, I'm getting a little bit older. I'll, I'll be 50 this year, so I like to save my hearing. So it's, <laughs> it's much quieter. And you know, we put it through a, a small little PA, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, Ryan will sit down with a Kemper, you know. And there's, I mean, it's as loud as as we're talking right now, as far as when we're sitting there just bashing stuff and you press record on the Pro Tools. And man, next thing you know, wow, that hey, listen to that little section right there. Man, we mm -hmm. should grab a grab a loop of that really quick and start building on that and so a lot of times things come about writing wise uh through those little jam sessions our little yeah. our little digital room is what we call it yeah you know because it's good and quiet man and you can focus on writing stuff mm -hmm. and you don't have ear fatigue it, it's great so i highly recommend anyone spends uh long hours playing drums and uh writing uh you know get, get try some v drums man, man totally save, yeah save your ears and save your neighbors <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely saving me right now because like i i mean i have access to my full kit but i you know i don't have a studio that i can just go to on a whim you know i have my my, my v drums at home and it's you know i jump on that shit and it keeps me sane man and i think it's important in these times find the best means possible to keep your sanity right yeah no absolutely and stay creative absolutely stay creative yeah yeah, yeah you might find something you know that you stumble across that you, you, you really enjoy making and yeah. you know Hit record. Knows? Always hit record, you know? Yeah, always, always. And experiment, you know, especially on these down times. Try something you didn't normally, you yeah. know, you wouldn't normally do, you know, yeah. like when you're in a big jam room with everyone else. It's like, well, yeah. take advantage of your alone time and see, like, kind of, you know, see what you truly like. You might find that you it really enjoy something that you wouldn't norm normally do. Exactly, so, yeah. And I, you, can't, you, I can't stress the experiment enough. <laughs> no, you, you pointed out definitely, man. You know, think outside the box, get out of your comfort zone, especially because, you know, especially in these times, it's, it's easier for you to tra get trapped in that little hole. And, you know, you get too, yeah. you get too into yourself. And so for some people, it's not a good idea, man. You got to get yeah, out of that it, box. 
I'll say another one too. Don't mm-hmm. worry about what everyone thinks and don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Just yes. do what you want to do, man. Do what makes you feel good. Express yourself as an artist, you know? Definitely, man. Thank you for those great words, man. I could not agree more. Again, Skinny, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, brother. Uh, send some high horns and my best regards to the rest of the, the rest of the Mushroom Head crew. Uh, can't wait for you guys to get back on the road. Can't wait for everybody to hear A Wonderful Life, the Napalm Records debut, coming out June 19th. Thanks for taking the time to talk to KNAC.com. Any last words you want to give everybody out there? I just want to say thanks, man. If you've been listening for 20 minutes or you've been around for 27 years, I couldn't do it without you. I've had a lot of help from all the different lineup band members, the lineup of record labels, to tour managers and product managers and crew, man, you know, all the shows and just all the festivals. I just can't say thank you enough. Like I said, I look back on eight albums in 27 years and, you know, I'm blessed. So thank you again. Again, this is KNAC.com. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at MetalXCandy. I'll catch you soon. Yeah, man. Guaranteed you will see us. Great, man. Stay safe, man. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.